Here's an example of when I ran the code in the past. I had 0.5 AVAX and then I went back to my terminal and I ran my code and the compound was successful. And then when I go back into Aave, you can see that I now have 0.8 AVAX tokens. So yay. So now I'm going to go into the code, go to my repository and you can find the codes listed. So if you go to the repository called YouTube tutorials and you see I have one called auto compound curve pools, you click that one and you see I have like instructions here as well. So the first thing you have to do is to clone this repository. So let me just walk through the instructions really quickly. So this is the auto compounder where you're compounding your rewards from curve to RV. But please, you have to interact with your private keys as you are doing this because you are interacting with the blockchain. Create a new account just for this tutorial with a little bit of funds so you don't put any of your funds in jeopardy, especially if you're not used to dealing with private keys. So disclaimer, keep your funds safe use a separate account for this. So now let us jump into the code. Okay, so there is a file called autocompound.js and this is where the code starts. So in here you see a bunch of functions which does a lot of the things that I mentioned before, such as for example, claim reports, compound rewards. It starts in the function called main and in this function I'm just printing, hey, welcome to your query of autocompounder. And then I have a function here called auto auto claim and compound. This is where the majority of the functionality lives. So here I'm going to do a method called get reward tokens. So if I say get reward tokens, the way this method works is that it takes in the smart contract, as I showed you guys before, the RV smart contract for the RV pool on curve. And then I'm going to check what the reward tokens are. So I create on a variable called reward tokens and that whilst the reward token returned from the smart contract is not the 0001, then I'm going to keep checking to see what the reward tokens are and incrementing an index. So I'm going to check for position zero and then position one. So this is going to return the reward token. Every time I get a reward token that is not equal to the 000 reward token, which doesn't exist, I'm going to push it to the reward tokens array. So that is how I get the reward tokens. The next step is saying, okay, hey, you're getting these particular reward tokens from Curve. So now I'm going to check to see if I have any rewards available to claim. So I have a method called check claimable rewards. So here in the check claimable rewards method, I am passing my address that has funds deposited into Curve, the reward tokens that I know is available to, to claim as well as the smart contract. So now I'm checking the method on the smart contract. So this smart contract object is, where did I pass it in? It's from this one. Where is it? Ave pool smart contract. And that is the one that we got as you saw in the example earlier. So now I'm checking and if I do have any rewards, I'm just going to push what that reward is to this array again. So very similar be like before and return the token of rewards. So if I go back here, that is where I am. I'm checking the token rewards. So then I'm going to print to the console saying these are the rewards that are claimable. So once I say that they are rewards claimable, let's see if we have enough rewards available to claim. Going to the method called attempt attempt reward claim. The only token that we can compound right now into RV is actually the wrapped AVAX token. So because I know that this is something I've hard coded. So if you were to do this for a different pool, you have to change this particular method, but I'm checking to see what that is. And I have a function that I created called get WAVAX index. And I'm just checking to see where the token is the index of whatever the token address is on Avalanche. So that's a token address. So Let's see, let's go back to where I was. Yeah, so attempt to reward claim. So yeah, so I'm going to get the index of that within the array. And by getting that index, I'm going to see in the token rewards array what those rewards are. And I'm checking to see if it's greater than 0.1. You don't have any decimals in the blockchain. You just have really large numbers. So I have to convert it to the way equivalent to it, which is the smallest unit of an ether. And ether is the name of the unit of currencies within the Ethereum virtual machine. And by the way, Avalanche does use the Ethereum virtual machine. So that's why it has like similar names. So I'm going to convert it to waste. It's going to take this number and put it, create a very, very large number. It's actually going to be one with probably like 17 zeros behind it. And I'm just going to see if the rewards available is greater than 0.1. Because if it is, I'm like, okay, cool. I am ready to compound. So that's why I write this message saying if it's greater than, then I am ready to compound. And by the way, we are dealing with very, very large numbers. So I'm going to use a library available within the Web3 library again called web 3 utils or two big number. So it can do the comparisons and not have to worry about any kind of arithmetic errors. So I see that there are enough rewards to claim. And then I'm going to say, hey, let's claim 
claim those rewards. So this is taking us to the first step of us interacting with the blockchain, actually writing a command to the blockchain and extracting value from the blockchain, which is by claiming the rewards. So if I check to see what that method does, it takes the Aave pool smart contract and it says claim rewards on behalf of myself because that function requires you to say, well, which user do you want to claim rewards for? And this first method here, I'm saying estimate gas. So what this does, it tells me how much gas is required to run this function, as in how many units of gas. Another great thing about doing this is that if, for example, if for some reason there's an error in your code and the smart con and it fails, so like it would never ever compute, then by running this, an error will come up saying like execution reverted or something. So then you can look into your code a bit deeper instead of executing the transaction and it's failing anyway and losing gas fees. So here in this section here where I've gotten, I've received the gas, I can then send the actual transaction to the claim rewards method on the obvious pool smart contract on curve. And I'm going to pass information like who is coming from the gas price as well as how much gas is required. And once that succeeds, I'm going to send a message saying, hey, successful claim, and here's a transaction hash. So that's great. So now we're able to claim rewards if there is enough rewards to claim. And then the final thing to do is actually to compound these rewards. So if I go here in the compound rewards method, I just hard code the wrapped ABAX token because I know that's the one that I am going to be compounded with in Aave. And then I'm checking to see, well, what is the balance of the wrapped ABAX token within my wallet? Because what if I have received wrapped ABAX from a previous claim or whatever the reason, I want to compound all of it within Aave. So that's my business logic here. You can change this if you want to. And I'm checking again. If this balance is greater than 0.1 AVAX, then sure, let us compound. And then here I have a method that's saying AVE.deposit WAVAX token, how much to deposit, as well as who you're depositing on behalf of. So what is this AVE.deposit method? Well, this is something that I created myself within another file. So if I check to see what, what is this RV thing, this is another file here. So let me just show you again. At the top here, I say require RV. So you know how I'm requiring these libraries and these libraries help me do so many things? Well, think of it like I created my own library and it's just another script where I include just RV specific code. So if I were to go in the RV script here, again, you can see it looks very similar. I'm importing the same modules. I also have the address of the lending pool provider from RV, the ABI, and the smart contract. So the same steps that I did here for the curve, I did as well for RV. So then this is the deposit method and I am using the deposit method that is available on the smart contract on RV. And the way that I found this was going through the RV documentation and finding out exactly how it works. So first things first, I have to give permission to Aave to spend my tokens, because remember, I'm taking tokens out of my wallet and putting it into Aave. So because I'm doing that and it's an ERC20 token, I need to give the smart contract of Aave permission to spend or to take out that ERC20 token from my wallet. In this case, I've chosen to do this by checking the allowance first, checking to see if I've previously given Aave this information. And if not, then I will approve it. So again, this is another method on a smart contract where I'm approving that I can spend this token or Avi can spend this token. And then the next steps here is just to deposit again. So the same functionality you see me do before I do again. I'm using the lending pool smart contract. The method is called deposit. I'm estimating the gas, which is which has two purposes. It tells me how much gas is required. Oh, for some reason I hard coded this and this needs to be this gas. But yeah, it tells me the gas required. And it also is telling me if there, if there are any errors and this whole thing will fail and I would know without executing it on the blockchain itself. And then once that is fine, I will then deposit it and then it will say deposit successful. And if not, it will say I'll be failed you for whatever. So if I go back to autocompound.js, then that is the last thing. And if I check my main method, which does called auto claim on compound, it first calls this and then it wraps it within this interval thing. So I can run this at run every, you know, one hour, two hour, three hour. So here I say the polling interval is actually four hours, by the way, it's in milliseconds and it'll just continue running the code if I wanted to do that. I'm not actually doing that because the gas fees on, our, on Avalanche are 
not as low as I'd like it to be. So I'd have to be compounding a lot of money for this to be worth it in my opinion. But you can easily take this code and port it across the polygon, by the way. So let's see what this would look like. So let's check now. I don't think I have enough rewards to claim, but let's just see. Here I'm in the YouTube tutorials folder, which is on GitHub that you have access to as well. I'm going into auto compound curve pools and I'm going into the one last call avalanche. Ah. The one last called avalanche curve pool. And then I'm going to call auto compound, which is going to run through all this code here. So let's see. Cool. So these are the rewards, not enough rewards to claim. So you see, I don't have enough rewards to claim, but let's say if I were to change it in my code, what the amount available to claim is. So let's see if I can, by the way, let me read through it. So you're getting these tokens from Curve. These are the rewards that are claimable. And obviously this is in the smallest unit of um, an AVAX token, which is a way. So it's actually not a massive number, it's actually a decimal. So here I printed correctly saying that not enough rewards to claim for this token, which is wrapped AVAX. So if I could change it in my code, because I think I use 0.1, if I change this to 0 0.003, I think there was somewhere else I had 0 0.1, 0 0.003. Probably should take this out in a variable so I don't have to change it in two places. But if I were to do that, it's checking. Okay, so they're saying it's worth claiming because you know I changed this to a very small number. And then it's telling me how much gas is required. I think that's printing somewhere on the deposit side. Successful claim. Okay. So I was able to claim the rewards and this is a smart, this is the transaction hash. And then I was able to deposit it within Aave and this is the transaction hash. So I just also compounded my reward. So definitely have fun with this. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know if you enjoyed this video and if you'd like to see how you can do this code in Solidity. If you want to create a smart contract with this code that does the auto compounding for you, let me know in the comments below and see you guys in the next one. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.